exercise we're going to do today, we're starting off in standing, is going to be a roll down. Okay, so it's a full kind of spinal stretch, more of a mobility based exercise. What you want to do to start with is just tuck your chin in like a filing cabinet. So, popping your chin back as if you're giving yourself a double chin, you're then going to roll your chin down to your chest and then start shrugging the shoulders down and then start leaning towards the floor. So, this is a Pilates move called a roll down. One way I like to describe it is imagine each level of your spine, each level of your vertebra is a pearl. And you're just dropping one pearl over the next. As you reach the floor, you get a good stretch in your hamstrings. You're then going to come up nice and slowly. So think about tucking your tailbone underneath you first, then start to extend through the lower back, straighten the lower back up. Then straighten through the mid back, upper back, pull the shoulders back, and then you're going to look up towards the ceiling. Okay, we're just going to do that once more. So, again, chin comes down, chin tucks in, then chin on your chest, so put your chin on your breastbone, then start coming down, compressing through the rib cage, condensing the rib cage first, so shrugging the shoulders, then start to bend forward and let the pelvis rotate and the lower back starts to lean forward and then you're sliding yourself down your legs. Touching the floor again, just see how low you can get. And then after that, as you come back up, tuck your pelvis underneath you first, then start to extend through the lower back. Keep sliding the hands up and then standing up nice and tall. Okay, from there we're going straight into rotation. So hands together and you're just gonna rotate from side to side. So just twist. You can feel my lower back's quite tight this morning. But again, just leave the elbows and just think about how far round you're going each side. And just try and get a little bit further around every few repetitions. Again, follow your elbows round, so look which direction you're going in as well. So the neck's moving at the same time. And just keep rotating. Good. That's three, two, one, and zero. Stuff in there, back to the middle. Okay. Widening the feet. The next one I call windmills. Okay. We've got several other names. With your left hand, you're going to touch your right foot. Okay. And with your right hand, you're going to touch your left foot. Okay. So it's another rotation, but this time you're just leaning forward. And again, just try and reach, if you can, try and reach outside of that foot and look to the opposite wall each time. Okay. And just keep tapping the other foot. You have five, four, three, two, and one. And then just slowly bringing yourself back up. Okay, next thing you're going to do is slide the hands down your sides. Okay, so sliding the middle finger down the outside of the knee or the outside of the seams. Your trousers and just keep rotating. So I keep leaning from left to right. Yeah, that's three, two, and one. All we're going to do next, okay, is just get the arm involved. So the arm's going to come over now. So lean over with the hand, okay, and then over to the other side. So you're getting the lats involved, massive muscle in the back, latissimus dorsi, so your back wing muscles underneath your armpits. Touch into the arm. That's what you can feel stretching up there as you bring the arm over. You also feel your obliques a little bit, potentially a little muscle called QL, Drax lumborum. Again, getting all of those structures a bit of a stretch. Just keep leaning right over to the side. 
So guys, today we will be coming into some actual stretches as well, but obviously as you can tell, to start with more of a mobility-based session. Shaking out the cobwebs, getting your back moving. Last couple through, just leaning over to the side. And then one more, as far as you can, just leaning to the side. Good stuff, standing back up, okay. Hamstrings next, we're going back down to the floor. Okay, just try and touch the floor, try and touch your shoes or grab your shins as long as you've got your hands attached or touching something, okay? So don't try and just hang and lean because then you'll be contracting the hamstrings. So try and touch the floor. Again, if that's really easy, bring your feet closer together and try and get your palms flat. If it's really difficult, just widen your feet and just worry about getting to your toes. Okay, we're just holding down here. Five more seconds, and then we're going to walk over with our hands to the left hand side. So, two, one, and just bring your weight over that left side. So, I've got my hands either side of my left foot. Good, and then I'm walking back to the middle and over to the right hand side. Okay, just again hold in here. If there's a slight bend in the knee as you do this, don't worry. You'll be getting more of a hamstring stretch that way. If the leg's straighter, it's the tissues in the back of the knee, the gastrocnemius, sometimes actually more of a stretch of the nerve tissue as well. So don't worry, just do either or, as long as you feel a stretch in the back of the thigh. That's great. Back to the middle, guys. Ten more seconds for nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and just slowly coming back up. Okay, and try and keep your back nice and straight as you get kind of midway. Perfect. What we're doing next with those feet planted still quite wide, you're just going to lean to one side. Okay, so we're stretching the groins. And as we do that, okay, we're going to double up with our stretches and we're going to start stretching the upper body as well. Bring the arm across and pull it in with the opposite arm. Okay, so posterior capture of the shoulder, pulling round, stretching your deltoids, so your shoulder muscles, and just hold there. And again, you're stretching two stretches, so think about the stretches for each, and make sure the arm is pulling in the shoulder tight, and make sure you're leaning far enough across that you can feel the stretch in your groin as well, in your hip adductors. So make sure you stretch your bow. Three, two, one. Back to the middle. Change sides. Now I'm leaning over to the other side. I've got my weight now on my right leg. <coughs> my left groin is stretching. Other arm across and pulling nice and tight. Okay, it's going to be a 20 second hold. Again, it's a deltoid stretch or a shoulder stretch. Posterior capture of the shoulder coming round. And we're just holding there. Five more seconds from there. So five, four, three, two, one. And just relaxing that shoulder off, back to the middle. Okay, we're gonna carry on stretching our arms now. Underneath, kind of inferior shoulder, okay, and triceps, so three muscles in the back of the arm. Arm just comes up and over, and you use the other hand to pull the elbow back, okay? So arm over your head as if you're scratching your back and you're just grabbing that elbow and pulling back. You can then use your neck to extend and push that arm back. That's what I'm doing now. So I'm pushing my head onto my right hand that's then pushing my left elbow back. Again, this is one you can do in seated, in kneeling, in sitting, in standing. So tricep stretch and the inferior capture of the shoulder gets the shoulder joint moving as well. Three, two, and one. Changing arms, other arm up and across. So now I've got my right elbow back. And again, remember to try and pat yourself on the back, scratch your back. So you get an elbow flexion as well. So you're then stretching the extensors, elbow extensors, which are the triceps. 
triceps attached to the shoulder as well. That's why you need the shoulder up in extension. That's why I need to extend, you need to push back. It's two attachments. That's five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Coming down there. Okay, good stuff. Next, we're going to go front of the shoulders. Okay, anterior deltoid, so the front muscle in the shoulder, and also the chest. Okay, chest muscles. What we're going to do is a wall stretch. Okay, so you want the arm against the wall. Okay, or if you've got a door frame, you can kind of bend the elbow a bit and come in. What I'm going to start off by doing, okay, just so I'm not stretching too much of the bicep as well, is I'm just going to have my forearm flat against the wall. So my forearm's against the wall at a 90 degree angle at the elbow, and I'm just leaning away. So I'm turning my body back in towards you guys, back into the room, and I can feel the chest stretch there. And again, if you're stretching out the right side, use that left leg, use the floor to push into the floor, pull yourself around, okay? Add to the stretch. So if it feels easy, use that left leg. If you stretch the right side, obviously just change over a few the way around and just push that leg down and pull yourself around and take into that stretch. Now I'm quite protracted at the shoulder, quite forward always on my laptop, phone, or driving, so I find this really tight stretch. As will most office workers, people drive a lot, people with protracted shoulders. That's three, two, one, changing sides. Other forearm into the wall, okay, or door frame if you've got it, nearby, and again, forearm on the wall. Now I'm using my body weight, I'm twisting myself towards the right-hand side of the room, opening up into the room, I'm using my right leg to pivot on, re push into the stretch. And you should get this stretch in the chest or the front of the shoulder. This side actually, I'm getting more in the shoulder. On the right side, I'm speeding the chest a bit more. So that's five, four, three, two, one. And zero, coming back there, good stuff. Stretching out the wrist flexors in the forearm next, okay, all you're gonna do, grab the fingers and just pull them back, okay? If you drive the elbow down as well, you may get a bit of a bicep stretch. You know, the bicep's got two attachments as well, so usually you need the shoulder down for this one if you want a bit of bicep involved. That will take it off tension. Down and bring it on tension. Here's the last five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Changing sides of the hand, fingers on fingers, and just pull back. So I need to start doing a little bit more often. Should I do my soft tissue work, sports massage? Don't do the stretch enough. If I'm honest. Get very tight forearm muscles. That's five seconds. Four, three, two, one, and zero. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're gonna stretch the calves next. Okay, so we're gonna do a few lower limb exercises. To do that, lean against the wall, a chair, a sofa, whatever you've got. Feet shoulder width apart, drop one foot back and just drive the heel down into the floor, okay? If you can lean against something, it's better because you can then push your body weight back. You put more weight through into the stretch. Okay, so we're gonna do calf stretches. So now we're doing gastrocnemius. So that's the two big heads of the calf. For that, you want the knee straight. So you want the knee extended to stretch the gastrox, to stretch the muscle underneath, which is called the soleus, which also attaches into the Achilles tendon. So it's those three muscles, your medial gastroc, lateral gastroc, and soleus. You need to take the knee out, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. As for now, this is your gastrocnemius stretch, your standard kind of calf stretch. Most people link up to the calves. And three, two, 
Changing one, changing legs, changing feet. Again, lean on something, push back, push the heel down. Again, the forgotten muscle in the calves is the soleus. People often don't stretch, particularly after long runs and cycles and things like that. You should be stretching soleus as well. I'll show you how to do it after this gastroc stretch. A few more seconds. Again, if you're against the wall, this is just another little bonus stretch you can do. You can have those wrist flexes in again when you're leaning against the wall. All you have to do is just walk your hands down so they're lower on the wall. You can double up some of your upper body stretches. That's three, two, one, and zero. So again, you want the ankle, what's called dorsiflexion. So you want the knees kind of coming over the toes uh, to stretch the muscle a little bit lower down to the soleus. And Achilles tendon, if you've got tight Achilles, uh, or you've got an Achilles tendon off your feet at the moment, you'll feel this as well. What it is, is a knee to wall stretch. So you use a wall, I'm just gonna use the plinth for today. You're leaning against the wall, so kind of hands on the wall. You're trying to drop the knee to the wall, okay? So if you just wanna try that first, Try and come up to a wall or a sofa, whatever you've got. Foot on, and if you can touch your knee to the wall, then just move your foot back a little bit. So I'm moving kind of five centimeters away, a couple of inches away. I can still touch the wall. So I'm now about 15, because I'm now quite flexible ankles. Now I can feel the stretch. So just stay against the wall and just hold there again, 20 seconds. If you've got a tight ankle joint, you'll make you feel this what's called your anterior gutter to the front of the ankle. If you do, you definitely got a little bit of joint stiffness in the ankle. I get that on this left side, don't get it on the right due to a former injury I had on my left ankle. So most of you will probably be feeling this in the Achilles and just above into the soleus, which for me I know you can feel this more in the front of the ankle. It's three, two, one and then coming up and the other side. So now my right foot, okay. I've got my foot against the wall, against the skirting board. I can touch the wall easily, so I'm coming back 10 centimeters. Now I'm starting to get a slight stretch. I'm going to 15. Again, most people are kind of between 8 and 12 centimeters. I've got big feet and flexible ankles, so I'm up around 15 centimeters. So now I can feel that stretch. I'll come back a tiny bit further. It was just starting to come up. Now I can feel that. Think about again leaning onto the wall, but also dropping your body weight kind of down, pushing through that bent knee and push the foot down into the floor, and you'll get more of a stretch there. And if it's a stretch you haven't done before, it's not the easiest to feel, but you'll get used to it. You're just thinking maximal knee over toe and then keep driving the heel down. Just get the knee as far over the toe as you can and keep pushing down. That's three, two, one, and coming up there, okay. Because the knee's bent throughout, there's more tension through the knee, so some people will feel that again around the knee as well. Don't worry about that, that's completely normal. Next, ankle circles, okay, we'll just loosen off the ankle fully, going into inversion, eversion, plant flexion and dorsiflexion. So all four movements. And that's just your really simple ankle circles. I'm currently going counterclockwise, okay, for about 15, and then I'm gonna change there, and now I'm going clockwise. Okay, so just on one foot, doesn't matter which one, I'm gonna do both. There's 15 circles one way, approximately, and 15 the other. So I'm doing five more, four, three, two, and one, and I'm changing feet, and again, just rotating. Again, I'm just feeling a little bit stiff this morning, so I'm going a little bit quicker than usual, but again, feel free to slow it down. Just make sure you're going through a full range of movement and you're pulling up the toes as well, then going around and pointing down. So go through a full range of movement. Again, if you don't do this normally, just slow the movement down a little bit. Good, that's three. Two, one, and zero. Stop in there. Okay, okay. Next exercises, we're going to come into kneeling for, okay? The first one's going to be a kneeling hip flexor stretch, okay? So hip flexors as a group at the front of the thigh. 
then they can get quite tight. Spend too much time in sitting nowadays. So what you're going to do, you're going to have your right foot forward. Okay, so at the moment, the hips at 90 degrees, my knees at 90 degrees, my ankles at 90 degrees. Okay, from there, the other leg again, hip straight, knees at 90 degrees. And then all you're going to do is just lean forward. So you're pushing your body weight forward. Okay, I'll show you from the side as well. So from here, you're leaning forward. You're trying to get the hip almost in a diagonal coming down towards the floor. So that bony part in front of your hip, you're trying to get that lower and you're trying to get it forward. Okay. Another little tip for you before you start is rather than having the pelvis down as so well, have your tailbone, your bum tucked underneath you and then lean forward and you'll feel the stretch quicker. And you won't have to go as low. It's actually called adding a posterior tilt to the stretch. So some of the pelvic attachments pull it up there and you'll just feel a slightly different stretch with that. Don't worry too much about it, but it's just another little adding for the stretch you can practice over time. So just learn your tilts, pelvic tilts, tuck it under and then lean forward. <coughs> Again, my pelvis naturally is kind of anterior tilted and more kind of hip flexor dominant, so this is a quite an intense stretch. Again, with all your stretches, make sure you're doing them 20 seconds. You're just holding, you're not bouncing in and out of the stretch. And just literally relax, breathe into the stretch. Today we're doing a little bit longer than 20 seconds each stretch. And that's three, two, one. And coming up. Okay, you're going to change sides. So now my right knee is down on the floor. And then my left foot is coming up. And then you're just leaning forward. I mean, this side is more flexible, so I'm going to move back. I'm going posterior tilt, tucking under first, and then I'm leaning forward. And again, to make the stretch hard, you just go lower, just push your body down towards the floor, and add that tilt, so tuck your tailbone under, and you'll feel more of an intense stretch in the front of the hip. You can, so you, another thing you can do, you can lean your body with these and you'll feel it in slightly different areas. There's nine hip flexors in total, so nine different muscles that flex the hip. So just doing your basic box standard forward stretch. You're going to get most of them, but again, you can play around with the angles. Same with all of these stretches, there's different muscles, different attachments everywhere in the body. You're never going to get all of them in one stretch. Yeah, coming back up there. The next thing we're going to add, we're going to get back into the stretch, okay? We're changing sides again. So I'm now back on my left knee, or right leg forward, and I'm leaning it in, okay? Now we're just going to add in that rotation. So you're going to lean over. So my right leg's forward, and I'm just leaning over to the left. So I feel my left leg stretching, and then I'm pulling away from that side, and I'm pushing the hip out. And I can just feel a slightly different stretch there, slightly different muscle group should be more lateral. So this is your knee and what they call TFL stretch. Again, TFL is really tight, thick band of muscle at the top, so it's quite a hard stretch. But just lean, just literally lean forward and then lean over. Just three, two, one, and then coming back. So I'm changing sides, other knee down, left leg in front. Driving my right hip down towards the floor and forward, and then I'm leaning away from that. So now my weight is on that left leg at the front, and we're just holding there. And coming back up there, turn right to there. Okay. Next stretch. If you go on to all fours, okay, and then just start bringing your feet backwards away from your hands. If you can, or if you want to, again, there's two ways to do this. You can come up into kind of a press up position first, and then like a twist amount, you're going to bring your right foot up towards your right hand. Okay. 
If not, just keep the back knee down. You can do the same stretch. Just bring that right foot forward. Okay, and then you're just going to lean down towards the floor. So you're going to get left hip flexor and right groin in one stretch. Okay, so big stretch. The pelvis, you're essentially pulling it dangling two different ways. So you get lots of different muscle attachments involved. I call this a Spider-Man stretch. It's got a few other names. That's what I call it. It's a nice kind of double up one after a run to get groin and hip flexors and actually even hamstrings involved a little bit. It depends what you do with your front foot. Just keep holding there. Again, try and keep the elbows extended and locked out. Just so you're not getting an arm workout at the same time. Just literally relax into the stretch. Nearly there for three, two, one. I'm stepping my right foot back. Now my left foot is going up and round off the left hand. And again, then I'm just pushing my pelvis down, bringing my bum down towards the floor and leaning forward. Again, you can play with the angles in here. If you rock yourself to the left and to the right, you'll notice kind of which tissues, which muscle group starts to stretch slightly differently. So have a little play with it and then just find a position that's comfortable for you. And we're just going to hold 20 seconds. Good, last five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Bring that leg back, okay? From that position there now, just bring your hips down to the floor, okay? I'm gonna do a cobra stretch. So spinal extension stretch, just push yourself up, okay? If you find that really difficult, then just go down to your elbows and hold it there. Okay, so a couple of different options. You can understand your elbows, you can push the hands out in front, or if you can, Get those hands close to your body. So for me, I've done this stretch plenty of times, quite flexible in my back. So I can just hold my body right here. Now I've got the hands nice and close to the body. Again, if you don't normally do the stretch, it'll be a little bit more difficult to start with. So just keep the arms out in front or stay on your forearms. Okay, different ways to stretch the back. Just move your body around. So now I'm just bringing my hands around to the left. And I'm turning my body to the left hand side. So a little bit of a different stretch there. I'm just going to hold here. And then I'll come back to the middle. And then I'm going to come back to the right. I'm definitely stiffer this way. <laughs> and again, just holding here. So now I'm kind of leaned. Just my upper body round and facing now to my right hand side. So a modified cobra stretch I sometimes do just adding that little bit of rotation as well. Just another way to get the back moving. Okay back to the middle and then you're going to come down. Just lean onto your arm. Okay so you haven't stretched the quads yet. We've done the hammies, the calves, the adductors. You can stretch the quads. So now you're going to bring both knees together, bring your heel in towards your bum, okay? So quad stretch. Again, when you quad stretch, it's nice and lying because you can just relax. If you're doing it standing, obviously, use a wall, a sofa, a pole, whatever you've got. You know, it depends if you're doing it after a run, a cycle, or just doing it at home. Just make sure you're holding on to something. Again, like I said before, it's not a balance exercise, so just relax into the stretch. Again, if you can get your heel straight to your bum, then that's really easy. One of the quads is a hip flexor as well. So all you do is put the hip into extension rather than flexion. So you just bring the hip back, okay? And then you stretch in the top layer of the quads, rectus femoris. So you bring that over the hips. You bring it over its two attachments. So again, if you find a quad stretch really easy, you need to get a heel to bum. And all you do is just drive that hip backwards. Bring your knee backwards behind you. That's three, two, one, and zero. Stop in there. Okay, I'm going to roll over. Other side. So I'm stretching left quad. Just lean on your side. You can be flat. You can be on your elbow. It doesn't matter. Knees together. Heel comes in towards the bum. And then, for me, heel straight into the bum. Quads aren't too tight. So 
now I can come back. I'm just bringing one knee almost behind the other knee. So I'm stretching that top quad a little bit more, getting the hip flexors involved a little bit as well. I'm just holding that. That's five, four, three, two, one. And zero. relaxing there. Okay, so that was quads. We're going to go back to hamstrings again and we're going to do them individually, okay? So what we need to do from that quad stretch is just sit up, okay? You're going to put one foot, the sole of your foot, into the side of the thigh and then you're just going to reach forward down that hamstring, okay? So it's just reaching forward and just holding there, okay? 20 seconds. Again, just go within your own capability. You want a fairly... Intense stretch, but not to the point of pain, okay? You just want to feel a good stretching sensation. And we're just holding there again. So try not to bounce. The one thing you can do is when it starts to ease up, which is called creep in the muscle, when that starts to happen, you just walk a little bit further. So now I'm just grabbing a little bit lower down the muscle. Again, feel free to grab your shin, your ankle, the midfoot over the top of the foot, wherever you want. Three, two, one, and coming up, and changing sides. Okay, so now I've got my left sole, my foot into my right inside thigh, and I'm leaning forwards. And again, think more about the lean and bringing your body weight forward than where am I grabbing my foot, okay? If you grab the top of the foot, you're gonna start just stretching the calf and the back of the knee, tissues there a little bit more. Don't worry too much about what the ankle's doing. Just think about stretching over the hip and the knee. So bring your body weight forward, stretch that hamstring. Don't worry too much about pulling the foot in and getting the calves involved as well. Seems to be a favorite. Just lean, lean, lean. That's five, four, three, two, one, and coming up. From that position there, keep that leg out. What you're gonna do is step the other leg over, okay? And then you're gonna use the other arm to hook that knee in, so you're hugging your knee, okay? So the leg steps over the other leg, and then you hug the knee in tight, okay? So I'm bringing the knee in towards my chest, and now I can feel nice stretching sensation in my left glute, okay? So my left buttock area, and we're gonna hold there just 20 seconds. Good, last few seconds, three, two, one, and zero, come out there. Okay, extend that leg. My right leg is now stepping over my left leg, pointing like diagonally into the room, use my left elbow there, elbow crease to just hook and pull in. And again, 20 seconds from there. Again, just pull in as tight as you can. Feel free to use both arms to kind of lock and pull. And again, you can link arms as well. If you're struggling to hold it, you can link your arms. You can grab one part of your t-shirt at the back as a hook. Don't worry too much about how you do it. Just get that hook in and just literally pull around. It's three, two, one, and zero. Okay, next section we're going to finish off with uh, a few lower back and glute based movements. After we finish the glute there, laying flat on your back, okay, arms out, crucifix position, and then you're just gonna go for knee rolls. So knees coming down to the side, back to the middle, and then over to the opposite side, and just let the knees fall down, a good stretch, and then come back to the middle, and over to the other side. So you can treat this at home as a stretch, so you can literally hold it 20-25 seconds each side, or you can use it like I'm doing now, as a mobility pan, and just let the knees drop from side to side. I find this stretch gets SI, SIJ, so your sacroiliac joint as well, 
so where your back and hips connect essentially. So that's why I usually do more of a rolling pattern, just to give those joints a bit of mobility, a bit of mobilization, rather than just holding it as a stretch. I don't feel particularly tight in my glutes. I feel more stiff with my actual back and the joints. So again, I just usually just roll side to side for around 30 seconds usually. Or again, if you've got a really stiff back, go 10 aside, so kind of go 20 total, and take you about a minute usually. Good, last few through for three, two, and to the side, and one there. Okay, next stretch, piriformis stretch. Okay, also a glute stretch. What are you gonna do? Figure four, okay, so it's ankle over knee. So pop your right ankle on your left knee, and then reach around the back of that left thigh and just pull that knee in closer, okay? Again, at home, if you find that difficult, you can pop your left foot up and put it on a wall, okay? Or you can straighten the leg and get more of an angle to kind of pull yourself in. For me, I've got really flexible hips, so I can just pull in nice and easily there. But again, if, it, if you find this is one of your stiffer movements, stiffer stretches, just put your foot against the wall, and then you've got something you can kind of lean against and push into for a stretch. And if you have piriformis syndrome or even some sciatica patients find this stretch really useful. In a lot of people, the sciatic nerve actually passes through the kind of notch under the piriformis. So if piriformis is really tight, again, it can, and sometimes will pinch and push down on the nerve. So that's why so many people prescribe this exercise with sciatica patients. It's not always the most useful, but it can help. And we're gonna change sides there. So foot down, other foot down. I'm now going left ankle on right knee, and then I'm pulling the right knee in towards me, and then just holding there tight. Okay, minimum 20 seconds from there. Just hold, hold, hold. Again, like I said, for most people, you'll feel a slightly different stretch to a normal glute stretch, that's piriformis. It's a rotator of the hip as well, but you will get the glute involved, generically anyway, just because of where the attachments are. So again, you get a bit of glute, a bit of piriformis. That's three, two, one, and coming down. I'm gonna finish off one of my favorite stretches. Crucifix position again, straight legs, okay. Arms straight out to the side. The knee comes up and then falls over to the other side. Okay, the so knee up and over, so you come over, popping your leg over your own leg there, and use that other hand that you come towards with the knee to just pull that knee down, okay? You may feel a bit of a stretch either in the lower back, like I do, or you'll feel it more kind of glute and IT band. And just keep the other arm out. I tend, as I've brought my right leg over to the left, but I tend to look to the right, just to try and cement my right shoulder down as well. So I tend to just add that in, it's just a little bonus for the stretch, just look over the opposite shoulder. So you're looking away from the direction your knees come. And that's three, two, one, and coming back up. So now I'm straightening my right leg, my left knee's coming up towards me, over the body, stepping over myself. Backing the leg over and using my right hand now to grab hold of the left side outer part of my knee and I'm just pulling that knee down to the floor. Again, this side I probably feel it more on my sides, my glute, than I do actually the lower back or SIJ. Again, so for this one, I want to look to my left hand side and keep my left shoulder pinned down. What do you do there, guys? In five seconds, give it four, three, two, one, and zero. Stop in there. Good, and then slowly bringing yourself back up there. So, around 40 minutes of stretches there, guys. Everything from kind of legs to ankles to pelvic mobility, spinal mobility, lower back stretches, QL, performance, bit of everything uh, this morning. 
any questions uh, about the stretches, again, feel free to fire them over um, or just drop them in the chat now. Again, I'll, I'll hang around uh, for the next couple of minutes. Uh, if you've got any questions or you want to check anything in the chat, uh, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, email them over to jack at energizedtherapy.com and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Okay, again, guys, thanks for coming. Um, schedule's out for next week. I've emailed that. Everyone should have had that in an email. Uh, any questions? Yeah, just let me know. Hey, Jack, thanks very much for that. No problem. Um, I was just wondering with the shoulder stretch, this yeah. one, um, I don't feel anything. Um, and I'm wondering if there's an extension or if I'm not doing it properly, if I need to relax something or tense something. Yeah, it's, it's one that's hard because you, you've got to really get a lot of traction and pull kind of the shoulder the shoulder around. It's, it really is about getting it as close to the body as possible. Even with that, because the shoulder is the most mobile joint in the body, it's, it's actually quite hard because the mobility is so good already. It's actually yeah. difficult to pull on the two attachments as such. So okay. think where, the, where the deltoids attach down into the humeral head there, you're trying to get the humeral head round, but the problem is your body's in the way. If you could get that round and almost in where your rib cage is, you'd probably be it more. So if you're naturally, and for females in particular, but more elastane in your body and you're kind of more stretchy anyway, it is a difficult kind of stretch. Um, I'd say this way, generally, most people are good anyway. It's quite hard. For me, I've got quite a bulky shoulder. I can kind of feel that because I can get quite a good grip and pull round. But I am okay. really, really pulling tight with the bicep on that. Most people actually struggle with that movement. That's the one we're tight because we're quite forward, generic. Everything we do is forward, 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 phones, keyboards, laptop, driving. It's more that stretch. People the wall stretch. Good. Yeah, I felt that a lot. <laughs> yeah. So that's probably the one I'd worry more about. Most okay. people are actually quite good in this range of movement forward. It's more kind of the, the back and, and getting the thoracic extension and pulling, and pulling back and stretching the front of the shoulder and the chest. So to be honest, yeah, it's uh, I'd worry more about your kind of anterior deltoid stretches than kind of the posterior capsule. That's usually very mobile anyway, coming forward. Okay. Or those opening movements that people struggle with. Does that make sense? Thank you very much. Have a good weekend, Dad. Have a good See you later, Katie. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.